Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and I'm not exactly sure when you're listening to this, uh, but I just have to say that at the time of this recording, we're about two months deep into this unspoken fiasco, and it sucks. Uh, you know, plans related to the channel have been put on hold, schedules have been disrupted, uh, even time for working on videos like this one uh, has somewhat been squashed. But, you know, I gotta say, my, my family and friends are doing well, and I hope yours are too. And I guess we'll continue to take it one day at a time uh, in an effort to get back into the swing of things uh, and try to return to a little bit of normalcy. Uh, let's get back into talking about the Younger Dryas, <laughs> you know, a true catastrophe worthy of human upheaval. <laughs> Anyways, um, this series, which I've titled Gone But Not Forgotten, uh, will be a deep dive into the megafaunal extinction of the Younger Dryas. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what that is, uh, we're talking about an event or time around 13,000 years ago where temperatures that were slowly on the rise suddenly dropped and North America alone lost about 75% of, uh, of its species, weighing in at over 100 pounds as, as adults. Uh, and just you know, as a frame of reference, that's, that's about equivalent to all of the megafauna that we have today all disappearing in a very short amount of time. Now, I'm specifically talking about this time frame right here, uh, and these are just a fraction of the species that are no longer with us. Um, there were obviously other species that went extinct at various times uh, during our Ice Age, uh, but it's this grouping that really deserves our attention, you know, mainly because it hits so close to home. Um, I like this graph, by the way. Uh, not only does it show the supposed expansion of the Clovis people through Beringia, right here with this uh, gray dotted line, um, but it also identifies, you know, the now very probable fragmented common impact over the Laurentide ice sheet uh, with this little red asterisk there. You know, keep in mind that as far as the Clovis people go, uh, they too, or at least their technology, also went extinct during this time, along with all of these other megafaunal species. I do want to keep uh, these videos short and to the point, you know, somewhere around four or five minutes focusing mainly on the overall genera, uh, you know, and species, the temporal range uh, of these animals, uh, as well as the geographic range, you know, of these extinct animals. Uh, for now, I'm going to stick to animals that lived here in North America. Uh, but as the series continues and the list grows, I will begin to introduce megafauna uh, from other parts of the world that also went extinct during this time frame. Uh, you know, we are finding that while centered in North America, the Younger Dryas Impact event was global in scale. Um, I will eventually uh, be getting into some of the Ice Age animals that we have all grown to know and love, you know, like the, the mammoths and the mastodons, the ground sloths and the saber-toothed tigers. But to start with, uh, I want to highlight some of the lesser known, but equally as amazing fauna that are now gone, but not forgotten. So without further ado, let's start with the fascinating camelops. Uh, this is also known as the Western camel. Uh, you know, most people have no idea that North America was once home to one of the most adaptable animals to have ever walked the earth. Uh, the camelops literally thrived through the entirety of the Pleistocene. Uh, as you can see, their temporal range, you know, that their time frame lasted for over 3 million years, uh, which means that they survived through multiple separate glaciation events, you know, at least 17 and possibly even more. Um, but they did not make it out of the Pleistocene Holocene transition. You know, that's the transition that we now call the Younger Dryas. Uh, we can identify these uh, camel species by their two-toed padded feet and their high ridged vertebrae uh, that were likely used to support the fat rich hump we've come to recognize uh, their descendants by. Although as of right now, we're unsure whether or not they had one hump or two. Uh, at the shoulder, these camelop species would have grown to be over seven feet tall and weighed in at over 1,800 pounds. As far as the geographic range, we find the camelops all over the place, you know, from, from Alaska, northern Alaska, all the way down through the western half of North America. Uh, and there's even been a few fossil remains found in places like northern Texas, southern Illinois, and even Florida, 
uh, which I find to be particularly interesting and something that I'll want to get back into in later videos. You know, the absence of late Pleistocene megafaunal remains in this portion of, of you know, North America is noteworthy, but something that we'll need to get into uh, in a, at a later time. Something else most people don't know is that the two-toed camelid species up to date didn't originate in places like the Middle East. You know, in fact, they originated right here in North America and spread both north and south, becoming the llama species of South America and the camel species of Asia and Africa. You know, and that's all very interesting. You can see right here where they originated and then traveled through the land bridge here into South America and traveled up through the, the Bering land bridge here, uh, becoming uh, the camel species that we know of today. All very interesting. Okay, guys, I'm going to go and wrap this one up here. Like I said, short and to the point. Uh, there's lots more to come in this series. We have lots of animals to, to focus on. And if there's a lesser known megafaunal species uh, that is gone and almost forgotten uh, that you would like for me to look into, you know, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. You know, the more I dig, the more I find. And even then, I'm sure I'm going to miss a few really good ones. You know, there's just so many. Anyway, anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.